Hey everyone, we are back with another Let's Play video, and by we, I mean with me as always is Cory. Say hi, Cory. Hey, how's it going? And uh, the thing that's a bit interesting about us doing Let's Plays, we're not necessarily good, uh, or we don't necessarily have much experience with the particular game we're playing at the time, but we're both professional pixel artists who have also, in the industry, worked on level and game design. So as we're playing, whatever discussion happens is going to be from that perspective. That's great. And oh, two... go, to, uh, yep. go to options, actually. Oh, good idea. I think we can give ourselves more health. Yeah, um, I would do that just from the start. All right, I mean, two-player, normal game. All right, I will be the, just the uh, typical guy. Be the lady here. When I was young uh, playing this, I used to always like the dwarf, but okay. as I got older, I realized he wasn't Ouch. as uh, intuitive. I guess he was, he yeah. was a little slower, so it yeah, was, yeah. was tougher to play with him. But Yeah, one thing I noticed, I was wondering if this was a regional thing. Um, Notice the dead guy lying down on the floor. <laughs> it's like a a, a, um, a puddle of spit <laughs> bile right. or so, or like he vomited instead of it being blood. I wonder if, <clears throat> because we're playing the world version. Right. Uh, I wonder if in the Japanese version that was blood, or if for every version they just made it spit instead. It's tough to say. Um, yeah, not without I, research. Like, that is... They were so limited with the color palette uh, for the yeah. environments that I don't know if they could have worked in a red or if, Good point. you know what I mean. Yeah. So I just tried to do the like one hit death move that also existed in Golden X 1. And I was talking to Corey earlier and it really seemed like it was much easier to pull off in the original oh. Golden X arcade game. And right. uh, it's like they really made it so you have to be incredibly perfectly centered on the character below you in order for it to hit. The other thing we noticed, uh, again, talking about, I'm pausing for a second, Corey, sorry. The, mm -hmm. um, again, like they really needed to reserve as much graphic memory as possible for all of these pretty robustly animated and big characters and enemies and animals and stuff. So the background graphics, definitely they were clearly using as few tiles as they could. And you could see they used just a solid color tile that they needed for up here in the trees anyway. They used that in a couple of spots to represent a hole in the tree. And Corey made a great point also that on a blurry old style CRT TV, it would have been far less noticeable that that was a perfect rectangle tile up there. And then th this is the bane of many environment artists that have made tile sets. Most of the time, it's somebody else that ends up making the whole tile map for a level, and they'll make a mistake because often they're not even an artist. And the artist doesn't have time in the, the production of a game often to go back and make sure that their tile set was used properly. And you could see right here going up and down uh, this perfect vertical line where this edge tile was used here that the artist who made the tile set probably would not have been happy that it was used that way. You'll see that a lot in old games, but yep. that one's really obvious because yep. of the contrast of that green and how perfect that line is. <laughs> so, exactly. yeah. All right, I'm going to unpause it now. Nice, pleasant. I like the uh, swampy gray water there. That was a really nice transition. You mentioned something about that too, uh, Corey, that despite the um, limited tile usage, they did a great job making sure that you, you visually feel like the level is progressing. Right. So there's just enough variety in using the tiles intelligently to, uh, to make sure it doesn't feel like you're just seeing the same repetitive area looping over and over again or the same exact tiles being used the same way over and over again yeah this game because you know the first golden axe it was in the arcades and when they made the mega drive port it was kind of or the you know sega genesis port it was kind of obvious that like you didn't feel like you were quite playing the arcade it was a good port but it yeah. still like it wasn't the same you yeah. know what i mean like it, it was clearly like they were trying to mimic everything in the arcade, so a lot of things suffered as far as all that goes. Yeah. But with this one, it's like a more refined version of the same game, essentially. It's kind of this, you know, there's not a lot of new stuff in the yeah. game uh, or a link to it or anything. Uh, and I don't know 
I guess maybe the story's different. I don't know. But this one was tailor made for the system, and it just yeah. it looks and plays a little better than the first one for the Mega Drive. Yeah, uh, a little more refined, I think. So. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I think the, the original cartridge was probably I'll have to research this. Um, probably used even less memory. I remember it being quite drab visually and um <laughs> isn't it funny it looks like you're grabbing them or you're both trying to grab each other oh, right. in that one frame before you get picked up by this boss but then it's like oh they won it almost feels like a wrestling game like is there a right. mechanic to do like that test of strength to see who wins the grab <laughs> right but it, again it's just them using they've got so little visual memory that uh, they they have to use things wisely and uh, recycle art a lot but that led to a bit of an a lack of clarity in the middle of the grapple as to who grabbed who right yep yeah it just stuck on that one Oops. frame kind of thing yeah yeah i just noticed the mouse pointer was over the screen so i got that off sorry viewers <laughs> all right let's see here yeah I, I noticed too that i think the soundtrack uh is pretty good in this game the music uh yeah. Uh, even the sound effects are pretty well designed, but the music is better in the, in the way for Mega Drive. You know how it can often have some unpleasant noises and stuff, yeah. but they avoid it. Uh, it seems like pretty well in this one. Yeah, and sure. it's better than the first game, I think. So it's definitely an improvement, I would say. Yeah, I, I can't say the same for three. I didn't play it nearly as much, but I don't know. I'll have yeah. to look yeah. more into that one sometime you know exactly yeah that reminds me i never played the sequel and i only ever saw or played the uh the third uh installment you know years or maybe decades later on uh, a mega drive emulator and um so i was used to that one and then i had forgotten or never noticed how similar golden x2 was to the original so when i finally ran it to make sure everything was working for us to do this let's play uh, it shocked me that um the three selectable characters were the three original characters from the first game because yeah. i had remembered you know everyone remembers that that kind of panther man from the third mm -hmm. game oh i'm sorry we can hit each other right? uh, there was yeah. probably a way to turn that off in the menu that i just didn't notice uh, or i hope so yeah uh, it's possible. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if you could in this game or not. But yeah. Either way, it, there's enough space, I think, to yeah. avoid it more easily in this game, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Definitely not um, a little more claustrophobic like a game like Final Fight, where uh, the character oh. sprites are bigger. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah and the, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, I can understand their desire to try to nerf the uh, the move where you, um, you know, that basically instant kill for basic yeah. enemies. But at the same time, they limited it so much. it uh, You'd have to become so good for it to not just be frustrating that nearly every attempt fails. Right. Yeah, there aren't a lot in, of moves in the... Yeah. controls for this game uh, you do have like i think if you hit the jump and attack at the same time it does like a special something um it's oh, different yeah. for each character but uh but i don't know it might drain a health i'm not sure like a desperation move but yeah it looks like if... let me try it and see if it does uh hold on let's see no it doesn't it doesn't seem to take health so i guess or maybe it is, and I'm not seeing, <laughs> seeing it. Yeah, yeah. That is the other thing I wish had happened. Like, uh, this genre in general is my favorite. Beat em ups, basically. Which, you know, this is kind of sort em ups, this kind of a spin off of beat em ups. And um, so my brother and I have played almost every one ever uh, from the arcades and Mega Drive and Super Nintendo. And um, 
that's the one thing I wish had happened for the sequel here, is that they had made the combat a bit more sophisticated, had a little mm -hmm. bit more options for the players. Uh, we had done a Let's Play of Knights of the Round, which was a fantastic Capcom, I'm coining the phrase now, I'm sure someone else beat me to it, but sword em up, uh, or slash em up, I guess. Um, right. But the Knights of the Round, it was a very high quality arcade and then Super Nintendo uh, you know, game of this sort, and they had a really cool blocking and counterattacking mechanic. Oops, yes, of course I wanted to kill you and not, not the boss. But uh, yeah, they had, they had this really cool mechanic that I think even most of the people that played the game didn't even know. And uh, we were able to steal that. We're working on two of our own retro game projects, one of them being a beat-em-up called Metro Siege. And um, so I took the influence, all the things that I thought was the like the most fun from all of the different games we played. And even though it's a beat 'em up where everyone's fighting with basically fists and feet, uh, I basically stole and made a, a variation of that block and counter attack. Um, you can get that health. mechanic. Thank you. I didn't even notice uh, from um, from Knights of the Round. So right. Like, it would be so nice if you had, like, that kind of block mechanic uh, here. And, you know, if you're going to nerf that that really powerful attack so much, maybe just do something different with it or nerf it by making the enemies more likely to, um, to run out of the way, dodge out of the way, instead of just making the kind of uh, hitbox and how accurately you need to be perfectly centered with the enemy. Um, yeah. You know, like, that's how they nerfed it, and it just feels unsatisfying, like it's a bug. Like, like you clearly should have hit the enemy, and the game just decided, nope, not perfect enough to the pixel, so your sword and your giant body <laughs> mass is going to go right through the enemy. That's right. a less satisfying way to nerf an overpowered character. Yeah, it's... Like, I guess the, this came out in, like, 91, I think. Yeah. Um, so it's about 30 years. I, I guess maybe at that point the brawler genre wasn't too advanced yet. I mean, yeah, like, for sure, when you yeah. think about it, I think Final Fight had just come out maybe a year or so before, maybe a couple years. And, yeah. you know, I guess, I guess things hadn't quite got to that level. It seemed yeah, to, sure. over those few years you know beyond this is when it really started to change and they started yeah. getting creative a little bit although many still kept it simple you know what i mean i mean this was kind of competing with you know like final fight 2 and stuff like that once it came to the super nintendo but yeah but really at least in the u.s i guess that came maybe a couple years later i guess <laughs> so it's interesting like it, it did have it's almost like they came out with this so quick they yeah. didn't maybe they just didn't think about it like they didn't want to change it too much yeah because yeah they knew that the first game even though it was a good port like yeah. well people loved it and they bought it up we'll just give them another one yeah you know? exactly <laughs> so yeah there's it, definitely nothing wrong with the that mindset yeah. might have been but yeah. uh, i agree it would have been nice to have a little more going on yeah it and does Yep. It does uh, create, like, I love, I, I do like the little kick away, you know? Like, she does kind of a throw sometimes. Yep. But it, it does get to, with two player, it does become interesting how the enemies get knocked around in this game. Like, yep. that's, that's a cool, it's a little different than some games would have done at the time. Like, they go yep. kind of far, but yep. I don't know. It's, it's still... Yeah, it adds that that little bit, but yeah, I, I was gonna point out the same thing. That's uh, and that's one thing that I really made sure when working it out with the programmer of Metro Siege, uh, Alex, that I really wanted to make sure that the players and enemies felt more solid when interacting with each other and the world. And by that, I mean in this game, there's a lot of sensation. Like if you do send an enemy flying he'll go right through other enemies. It won't affect them at all. Whereas in Metro Siege, you can like throw a guy and he, he can knock into anyone that's in the path of his flight, uh, you know, of his thrown body. And I call that, you know, my brother and I used to call that crowd control all the time. Uh, when you're like, you know, 
you got people on either side of you, and you could do this in the original Final Fight too. You've got people on either side of you. You uh, stun, grab, and, and um, the guy on the left, and throw him into the people on the right. And the, to me, that was always really gratifying. And right. it's especially in a game like this, where you're always fighting a lot of enemies and are potentially surrounded. It's something that um, I really wish were was in this game as well. And of course, there's always a danger when we're let's playing games that we've not played much. We could complain that it doesn't have a feature that it actually does have, and we just don't know. So right. um, feel free to thumbs down and, and comment that we're idiots. It, it'll still help the algorithm. <laughs> um, you know. Well, I mean, like I said, this it was so long ago. I guess yeah. for its time, this was still a really great game. Yeah. You know? I also did notice the last couple of environments, really beautiful job controlling the color and contrast so all the sprites really stand out beautifully. Look how well, like so many Mega Drive games suffer from either just a real dull graininess or also what, as you know in virtually every video I mention what I call confetti syndrome, where everything is so high contrast, everything is so saturated and detailed that things don't really pop out but even with this hyper bright background because it's monochromatic and mostly dark to medium the uh, player sprites and that magic book stand out really beautifully against it so yeah they did a great job with, the, on with that. this level uh this level is very red not just the level like you you yeah. end up these skeletons are the one exception I think. yeah exactly every enemy in here is red too and, and it makes sense for the environment but it's it you, you do you do end up like just seeing that for this whole map. I think they yeah. could have definitely worked in a little more color yeah. on this one, but yeah, it's you know, good. It's still, uh, I do like that effect back there. Yeah, it's good to have themes, but it's also important to not beat your theme to death to the point where things become boring or monochromatic the whole way through. And obviously, if you have red enemies in a red environment, there's that risk again of the opposite of what I was congratulating them for. So right, the players show up great on this, but even these gray guys, because they're also dark to medium, they don't show up as well as the players. And then I'll imagine when we see the red character, the red enemies, they're going to show up even less. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they. You can see them, but it's. Uh, I suppose uh, on a uh, less saturated old TV, this might have not been so bad. I guess right. you know we're seeing it. Here. Yeah, yeah, uh, sharper than the artists saw when they were working on their blurry CRT monitors, and certainly right. sharper than it was intended to be seen by your average player on a blurry, typical blurry TV set back in the day. Oh, he shows up nice. Look at him. Like, oh, nice yeah. blues, yeah. and there you go. Really bright gold. I guess, I guess maybe that's toward the end. I think toward yeah. the end you end up with the red guys. I forgot about these purple guys. Yeah, it's a shame also that, I mean, they do have really nice music for this game and they do cover all the um, necessary sound effects, but I was just thinking it would be so cool if that lizard man every once in a while hissed when he attacked or, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, stuff like that can add so much to the atmosphere and giving the enemies you're fighting or the playable characters more character. And I don't mean overdoing like one or two samples uh, and playing it all the time like all the tood games used to have back in the day <laughs> where right. they'd say the same obnoxious thing over and over. <laughs> but you know, just the occasional nice little lizardy hiss when they're getting hit or attacking. Another cool thing that uh, classic systems could do quite easily that would really give you great memory mileage for sound samples is to... Uh, adjust the frequency or the pitch of a sound sample when they're playing it back. Right. And uh, yeah, they all have that death voice. It, there's, it's clear, like we were saying before, they were dealing with cartridge space limitations. Because yep. um, I don't know if it would. I, I suppose memory issues too, but it does seem more like an overall. Like, we can only have so many sound effects on this entire... Yeah, you know, cartridge. In the entire game, so to yeah. speak. Yeah. So, yeah, I do think that um, 
because we get away with murder to an incredible degree on Metro Siege, because while it will run on tons of modern platforms, it's actually being made to run on 30 plus year old classic 16 bit uh, system called the Amiga computer, uh, which was quite powerful for the time. You can end up making games that look uh, on par uh, with the Mega Drive game. But, you know, there's those severe memory limitations, and we're doing the same trick of playing back samples with a different pitch. And so, you know, we've got the custom uh, voice samples we made for the male characters grunting and stuff like that. And uh, we have a, f a female playable character, and all of her voices are just the, the male uh, voice recording with the pitch shift, and it works great. So you really can get a ton of extra use, and it would, it would have been cool if they had done that. Um, assuming they were able, I'm pretty sure the Mega Drive could do that. Um, you know, you could make different enemies have deeper or higher pitched voices and uh, stuff like that. Get more mileage and variety out of the same few sound sound samples. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm thinking this one does like so much of it is so similar to the first Mega Drive game that yeah. I'm guessing it, they just replicated the engine and yeah. made new art essentially. Uh, I, I I suppose they wanted such a fast development time right. uh, that they didn't really want to you know do a lot of special code like that or something right. yeah while the game is uh the first game is hot and it's sold most of the copies it's going to you get that sequel out uh using like you said the same major code base and uh even as much of the art as you can like i think uh i think these i think all these uh playable characters they're probably just pretty quick repaints like i think you know the 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 female especially seems different to me, but like the the core art could be the same. I don't remember, but yeah, yeah, he especially feels this guy here feels this. Oh, Arata continues. We'll have oh. to. Um, uh, we'll just quickly uh, after I die, we'll just quickly go uh, pause uh, recording, go on the internet, find out how to continue from any level, and finish the game. Much, much, much later. We are back. This is indeed a day later. And it uh, took a lot of time and trial and error to figure out how to do... This has got to be one of the most convoluted and complicated cheat codes ever. <laughs> and to make matters worse, if you Google it, the number one search result links to game facts, which are usually very trustworthy, but the wording is so poorly done. Literally starting from the first sentence, it has you doing the wrong things. So once I get it really down well, I'm going to record a video and we'll put it up uh, on our channel and I'll link to it on this video. Uh, to show anyone who wants to do this how to successfully do the cheat code to be able to start at any level. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> the guy just got up. I was rapid firing on the button and he just... Yep. That's another thing that always annoyed me about the Golden Axe games is the... Um, if an enemy hits you once, they can almost always get all three attacks and knock you down. Yep. Yeah, it's almost like... Uh you have to keep your enemies at a distance and yep. the the really close combat is an emergency situation you know uh, in this game yeah oh jeez the uh the dashing kick is like the most useful thing it's yeah sad in the game because it looks the goofiest but it's, <laughs> you know yeah and it, they do give you a huge priority, so even if the enemy had already started doing their kind of dash ram attack, and then you do it at them, you'll end up winning the dash attack. Um, so like they're already flying at you, and then you do it, and you'll actually win that kind of uh, ramming um, into each other thing every time. Right. At least every time I've done it. Thank goodness for that level select, because uh, I am sucking up a storm so far. But, so if we die and run out of continues again uh, near the last level, we can uh, sneak back over here. Yeah. It might take ten days to record the full game, <laughs> full game Let's Play, but we'll be able to do it. 
I noticed that, uh, it, it, like many of these games, and I think I mentioned this in one of our previous playthroughs, is, uh, you know, in single player mode, there's a certain level of predictability to the enemies that you don't get as much of in two player, you know, because yeah. they're going after two people. So yeah, absolutely. it makes oh, it a little more wild. Did you notice also if you're doing uh, your jumping move or the ram move, um, there's a very hard limit to how far you can go to the edges to the screen, and it's yeah. really arbitrarily pretty deep into the sc into the screen, not off the border, but it really keeps you on screen completely, and that's another way your ram won't work oh. or your jumping attack won't work and won't hit the enemy that's on screen invisible because you get stopped dead in your tracks before you reach it right like right there i'm trying to work walk further and i can't oh right so yeah. your ram move will get canceled out before it hits the enemy that's right there and the same thing with your jumping attack yet again they can still walk off camera exactly <laughs> so there we go well they get they get a little constrained i think in this game but uh, like it's not as bad in this one as it is in some of the other games but still But yeah, in general, it's a good idea when um, when there's circumstances like that. It's always better to make it in the favor of the player instead of the favor of the enemies. Right. Kind of yeah. like if you're making a shmup, you make the collision box of the uh, player spaceship tiny is much better than making every pixel of the spaceship able to take damage or get the player killed. It's such a great death sound. Bleh! <laughs> when the enemies die. Bleh! Yeah. <laughs> Little miniature uh, barf sound. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, they did use a pitch shift. It's the same. The, the player, my um, male hero character, human uh, character, it's the same sample, I think, with a deeper pitch. Nice. So they did have the code for it, I guess, yep. uh, maybe, you know, maybe there's memory issues, I don't know, I don't know yep. what that takes. Usually um, that's practically for free, to uh, yeah. to just, like, when you play a sample, you can just tell it what frequency to play it, so it's an incredibly small amount of data. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> And I think, even when you knock an enemy down, I think you can't even do that overhead jump attack and hit them while they're down. That would make it a lot more fun, too. Right. Speaking of that and all of our uh, criticizing the gameplay, I should say, uh, by now I should have already edited in footage of the beat-em-up game Metro Siege that we're working on. And uh, Corey and I have already been fantasizing about once Metro Siege is done and our other current project, Damon Claw, is done, we'd love to take the Metro Siege engine and uh, further enhance it to make a Golden Axe beater that's set in the world of Damon Claw just during a different epoch, a different time, so that it's like, you know, different heroes fighting different villains than the Damon Claw game, but set in that world as just another chunk of the history of that world. Um, yeah, we've, uh, you know, we, we've only talked, had discussions about it, but it's, yeah. it's a lucrative idea because, you know, it's, it's a, it, it became a very fun universe, you know, over time yeah, yeah. as we started adding to it, so. Yeah, it's just great to be able to just keep expanding on, um, the history of a world and, like, what different, um, cities and history and different creatures and all that stuff um you can get those uh health yeah thanks yeah it, it's um i think it's ripe for this this style of game for sure yep. so. yeah and i would say also that the um this the beat-em-up genre has been done better than the slash em up even though there are some really good like i said knights of the round is quite nice and there's that we also did a let's play of a really nice um uh rastan saga 2 uh oh sorry about that <laughs> and um but yeah that had some really great potential and some really nice pixel art but still like 
very limited move set, not very complicated uh, combat system, and like we've been talking about, the, um, uh, the they did themes to some degree, but then they kind of used up almost every enemy design they made for the game in like the first half of the first level. So it, it would have been nicer if they had kind of spaced it out and, you know, save a swampy level before you start showing your swamp creatures enemies. Yeah, it was more like it was... Yeah, there were there were some nitpicks about the art you could yeah. make uh, mm. and some of it. But at the same time, it was still a pretty nice looking game overall. Yeah, for sure. At the end of the day, it, it was sort of a design thing, you know? It yeah. sort of linked to the game kind of issue too you know it was pretty long yeah you know, i would say like well, we were we were just kind of watching it uh, and stuff but yeah yeah i think i think that was the best attempt at, at this kind of game for it's i guess it's time period yeah. and it still wasn't quite there you know right but. Blech. <laughs> and this these areas are when it starts getting a little dangerous and you can walk off. Yeah. You know, like, you couldn't do that in the early level, but you can here, so. Yeah. Blah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and get that magic unmaxed out. You have a lot more potential for magic. I was thinking, too, that would be really cool. I, I think there was a Golden Axe game where you could kind of control how much of your magic uh, points you're using. I think in the first one, I think if you use well, you it... in this one, you just have to, it's, you hold down the button for so long and it uses a more power. More oh, very cool. Yeah, I, you just have to kind of watch the meter down there to make sure you release it at the right second. You well, know? I had no idea. Well, but yeah, that's cool. I don't, was it like that in the original Golden Axe too? And I, I just never knew? So. Uh, uh, in the first game, no, I think it was just kind of yeah, I always took it to that you could just, the more filled up your magic meter was, the more powerful the magic when you used it, but you couldn't kind of dish it out uh, one magic at a time, like a weaker magic, to be able to do multiple magic attacks, but that's really cool that, that that's the case now. Yep, uh, yeah, you're right, I was able to use just one, that's really cool. That's like, I think that's the only way that you can use the full thing, like, you know, because she's got the super magic, you know, you can do yeah. like the, and that's kind of part of the strategy of this game is saving those big magic things yeah. for the bosses, but still, you get into some dicey situations, you know, throughout the levels. Because they keep, you know, recycling those, like, early bosses oh, or whatever. Could, yeah. Forgot to check again in the, um, Options if we could turn off uh, friendly fire. Oh, yeah. I didn't see an option for it. I guess it's probably not possible. Yeah, probably true. One uh, semi uh, disappointing thing about this game is even though they would do these color swaps of these guys, yep. I noticed that. Each guy's behavior will be exactly the same the entire game. Even these boss types, like however you fight one of them, is how you fight all of them. Yeah, they yeah, just yeah. Have more health, um, which usually is what happens with a color swap. But they probably could have got more variety out of them. Yeah, they absolutely. Tried. And that is a great point. Um, talk it going back to sort of the technical pic pixel side end of things that. Um, the Mega Drive had four 16 color palettes, and I think any sprite could be set to use any of those four palettes, whereas the uh, backgrounds, I think, could only use the first two palettes. Uh, do you remember if that's correct? Something like that? Uh, yeah, possibly. Um, I I'm not sure. I, I do know that one thing I think they do in this game is they got all the players with one palette and the HUD. And then I think maybe one for enemies. It, it's hard to say though. In some environments, I'm noticing they're just using one palette, so maybe they are reserving two for enemies. But right. or or you know, it, I, I'm not sure. You know, um, but I think right. you're right. Like, look at the older modes. I think or something like that uh, that they 
that they couldn't do what they could do later, I guess. Yeah, but yeah, my uh, what I was uh, going to get at was that you like let's say you design an enemy to use one palette. If you arrange the palettes carefully so that it's got the same kind of colors in the same order, for example, from light to dark, um, you could make it so that switching them to another palette will create a different looking enemy with different skin tone, different clothes colors, and stuff like that. And that's great to create visual variety, but a really good uh, game making team they can go a step further and also tweak the artificial intelligence of the remapped enemy. So not exactly. only are you increasing visual variety in the game using very little new memory, but you're also adding gameplay variety. So like, you know, oh, that colored version, he moves faster and he has a longer range attack or something or slides yeah. forward when he's doing or his attack. Or swapping out weapons, like they yep. could do that too yep. if they really tried. But, you know, I yeah. again, I think time and budget were definitely the issues yeah. that held this game back a little, you know. Um, yeah. It's still pretty solid. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. Fun, but, you know. And quite a good looking game for a not like super late generation uh, Mega Drive game. Like, the sprite work is really good, definitely inherited from the quality of the original arcade game. And the uh, ba background work, especially considering the fact that they really wanted to keep the tile count limited uh, for technical constraint reasons, they did a great job. Um, and like I said, especially avoiding that confetti syndrome while still having pretty detailed environments. Like, the characters tend to pop out, and we've mentioned this before in other videos, the big trick is to have large areas of monochromatic, so like you see the floor is all that greenish color and relative medium tones, and then the wall yep. is the purple staying mostly nice to medium tones. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's pretty decent. Like, yep. The game seems like there's a few areas of the game where you're like, ah, oh, that's, that's kind of bland or too yep. brown or something, but uh, they, it gets... It seems to get a little better as it goes along, and the yeah. last boss is insane. Uh, oh, I've never he, seen it, so we'll see. Yeah, he fights so different than everything else in the game, you're never prepared for him. It's right. insane. But maybe we'll stand a chance. <laughs> we'll see. Glad I didn't hit you there. I forgot that I could. Yeah, this guy has some weird palette issues. Like. Yeah. Those highlights aren't quite correct or something. Good job. I'm down to zero lives again, so it's obvious I'm the con the uh, continue eater <laughs> in this game. Well, I was the one who died last time. Yeah, but I think that's because I used more continues than you, so I basically stole one of your entire continues. I think. Yeah, are they shared? I I didn't know. Uh, I think so. That. Okay, I that makes sense why I yeah. wasn't expecting to have a game over when I did Exactly. Uh, you know, yeah, I think there's like three continues, and whoever uses them uses them. It's kind of lame it, that it yeah. doesn't like let you both use them to both restart kind of yeah. thing. That's usually how these games go. But... Do you mean give each character his own three continues? Well, like, like uh, you have your lives for the level, but if you both die on the level, you use a continue. Oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Both be provided, whereas, like, one of us is burning a continue just for ourselves. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, very uh, true. Which is kind of uh, different. Yeah, we talked about that in another Let's Play we did, where a big part of it was to just combat the rental thing. So they they would just limit the continues really severely and make the game hard just so it's less likely that kids will beat the game during a weekend rental and hopefully pressure mom and dad to buy the game so they can eventually beat it. Right, here I am using another... I think that's the second continue I use, so there's probably only one left. I Unless you use one. Yeah, so, so this might yeah. be it. <laughs> and we'll have to skip back to this level. Which, you know, that I code... I say the game, weirdly enough, it, it is... Due to that shared continue thing, it's almost harder on two-player mode. Yeah, that's I can, true. I, can, I got further a single player using the same character, so... These guys are infinitely susceptible to the, the dashing kick, so that's, that's like one continue. way to or ram or whatever for him. 
Uh, well, let's see if I can uh, beat this level. Uh, yeah. If I beat these bosses, then uh, we can do the um, the cheat code to get to the next level. There we go. So, oh, it's not the end of the level, damn it. Those are just sub bosses. Oh no. Well, you do have to survive, so you might be able oh, to do good. it. Oh, that's good. Ah, come on. I was a sitting duck there, recoiling from my ram mode. I do like how they did some of this, like, kind of walking down this uh -huh. isometric uh, hallway, you know, like, to add a little bit of... Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on now. trying to use the move where they're on either side of you and it's just right. it's so slow itself it almost never helps yeah it's it's definitely faster than the girl she just does like a like a back uh kick thing and it's it's like it instant hits the guy in front of you which is good but yeah his is a little i don't know he's trying to he jumps a very specific way when he turns around you know yeah. uh, come on Phew. I was afraid I was stuck there while he was doing his deadly one-hit move. Finally, I got a good use out of it. Totally There's hope for me. Uh... Not, not Jawas at all. Exactly. <laughs> nice. In fact, will they drop more? I figured I'd use one to kill them, and then hopefully they'll. No. Oh, maybe you have to hit him personally or anything. Yeah, I think, I think it's the same with the dragon fire or Damn whatever. It. If you kill those guys without just normal hits, they won't drop them. It's weird. Well, at least there were two enemies on screen. I accidentally hit A there, trying to jump. Forget what button it was. Turn around, idiot. There we go. Talking to myself. Right. Hope this level's not much longer. I want to get you back into action. If I can beat it. Super, super fresh skeletons, I guess. Come on now. I do not like getting surrounded in this game. Feel so yeah, that's, helpless. But that, that's kind of like part of the whole thing. Like you gotta you gotta do that whole knock move to get one far away from you to take on the other guy. And then it's it's really different. It's not like a normal beat em up. You're actually way more helpless when anything gets close to you. In this yeah. Game. Oh, come on. That's what I mean. Like, you have to be so pixel perfect with that move for it to work. Right. One thing I noticed that this game doesn't do, which is interesting that they never thought of it, I don't know if the third game does, is there's no, there's really no ranged units, except for those uh, little magic guys. Yeah. Like, they'll do the little... That, but the, which is really dinky. You know, you would think there would be a couple archers or something every yeah. now and again. I appreciate the fact that that guy went through me for no reason, but I would like some consistency in the game also. Other than almost everything is not in your favor. When the game pauses to load new stuff from the cartridge, like for the boss fights, it really scares me. Right. Another thing is, you know, there's really no stunning in this game, and it could have used it. Like, the guys yeah. will lie down for a second, but the second they're back up, they're completely back in action. Yeah. Oh. It would be neat to have that. Just, yeah, you know, I just... <laughs> Very unlikely I'll be able to beat these guys and the boss with this one life and one magic. They do a total fake out here with this boss. That's oh yeah. Yeah, I've got to say one good thing. I'm really glad they didn't do the uh, timer thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Because if imagine losing a life because you don't beat beat them fast enough. That would really suck. See, oh, boy. 
you think he's got that head, and he doesn't. <laughs> oh, just oh, it's, it's <laughs> that is funny. Nice. Oh wow, yeah. Let's we'll see about this. There's just too many enemies, and I'm too helpless and not very skilled at this game. That's the thing that was meant to believe that this is the last guy. Right. He's just a nor another normal one of those. But he is the boss of this level, right? Yeah. I think this is the last level of those. I would hope so. If it's, if it's not, then I'm misremembering that I have to Come on now. <laughs> ah! The stress! Uh, no, I'm dead. Because we might need several attempts to uh, beat the final boss. Right, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure. I We haven't really practiced him. I, I fought him once fairly recently in single player, but it's... He definitely uh, was pretty rough. So. Go ahead and use that credit. Oh, come on. Protected by the edge of the screen. That's yep. his greatest magic power. <laughs> Man. Built in force field for the enemies. Of course, he's got like, you know, Frodo's sword or something. Again. <laughs> yeah. Sting? I think that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever it's called. Yeah, it was. Bilbo okay. named it Sting. Uh, Alright, get it. ready. <laughs> oh man. Oh boy. So it goes right into the final boss yes. fight. I've got one magic. Oh, let's see. Oh, I kept it. Even guys it infinitely. So the, the regular guys just keep attacking him. Off, but yeah. He's the important target for sure. Right. That wasn't very friendly. You can't even throw the skeletons into him to hurt him. That would make it so much cooler. Oh, I, I did hit him with one. You hit him I with a skeleton? It's, yeah, it's like he's got a very specific collision, I guess. Oops! <laughs> he seems like he's, he's not as difficult on two player, I guess. Well, he's, he's distracted by two people. Confused, yeah. Oh, I threw him. Wow, look at that. We're throwing him back and forth. Is it over? Hopefully we can make this happen. And it's also a shame that there seems like no way to ever regain health or magic without those little uh, imps. Yeah. Or the Jawas. It'd be, it would be neat if he spawned one of them every now and again. That yeah, exactly. Cool, but they probably didn't have the memory for it or something. Or like have them run on screen and they're trying to give the magic to the boss and then you could steal it from the boss before he gets it. That would be really cool. You know what I mean? Like he needs it too for him to do his magic attacks. And you could intercept the imps that try to give it to him and take the magic for yourself. I really? can't even see, like I was completely yeah. obscured by him. I've got to say though, there really, there's, I've not seen much sprite flicker at all, if any, uh, which is really nice. No, Especially I mean, considering how many enemies are running around overlapping each other. That's true, they handled it well. Yeah. Oh, and the HUD. Uh, oh, that's right, the Mega Drive can do a HUD layer, can't it? Right, yep. 
Or I think it can. I know the SNES can. Yep, it's, it's got a layer dedicated. That just yeah, that's awesome. Nice. We got him. Yeah, he wasn't that bad. Yeah, uh, well, c considering the fact that we were able to redo that level and this one with the three continues, you know, being as we're very, very unpracticed and I've never played the game before. Uh, right, yeah. Definitely reasonable. I think the thing that makes him harder single player is he gets away from you easy and yeah. he's still spawning like the three same guys. number of skeletons yeah. with, with one player fighting him. So and you're... they really have a drastically greater chance of surrounding you because there's only you so all three skeletons are going for you all the time and getting surrounded in this game is definitely the the uh where the player is the most powerless yep for sure nice but this music this song really reminds me of the kind of uh vibe of the original streets of rage i wonder if the uh same musician did this music or uh who knows? Uh, I mean, I'll it was check. Sega, so yeah. they could have had some overlap with the people that worked on them. Yeah. I, I do know that this song is a little odd for this game. It, you know, yeah. like it's good for credits, but exactly. it, it does sound a little odd. And I noticed once it gets to the title screen and it's saying, you know, got Golden X2 on the screen, that music yeah. is a little odd too. It's, yeah. it, it sounds like a mismatch, you know. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of great use of uh, reuse of memory, those are, I believe, the running villager sprites from the game. So you've got background graphics uh, from the game, you've just got a, a bitmap font used for the credits, and you've got uh, all sprites from the game. So you have a cute little thing. Now it, now it feels like the villagers are running to you to celebrate instead of running for their lives. Yeah, and it's like you said, they were able to get all those characters there with no flicker, you know? Which yep. Is neat. Yeah, that's a lot of overlapping characters. Kudos, Mega Drive slash Sega. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we didn't really utilize the dwarf any. I guess we could have played with him some, but I didn't want to yeah. change uh, suddenly, yeah. you know, uh, who I was using, because I knew I wouldn't do as well. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe if, I, if I'm not too lazy when I'm editing the video, I could splice in some footage of somebody else controlling the dwarf. <laughs> right. <laughs> Steal it from a long play, you know, just a couple seconds, so people yep. can see the dwarf in action. But Yeah, overall, definitely a good quality game, and it definitely feels like, I mean, it's been ages, but it feels like a definite improvement over the Mega Drive version of the first game. This game was designed by the same guy that designed Altered Beast, and both games had the same impact on me. When I first saw it, I was so excited. And Golden Axe definitely holds up better in the gameplay department than Altered Beast. Both games, I just really liked the overall atmosphere and, and stuff like that, and overall graphic quality and stuff. But Yeah, it was tough to pull these things off in the 8-bit days. So when it got to these 16-bit yeah. consoles, they had just the extra graphical power to give it yeah. the, the, not only the size of the characters, but also just the, you know, the grittiness, the detail. It feels, yeah. it feels like a, like a more, um, real world even though it's yeah. clearly you know by today's standards you're kind of uh taken out of it because of how old it is but right. at the time you got to think of what people were playing before this right. you know and i think this was this even came out like this was around the release of the super nintendo in the yeah. u.s so it was you, you got to think of how early that was at the time yeah. like and how few games it had so this was like really uh top of its game you know yep. in, in the moment yeah, yeah absolutely all right well, i guess we will wrap this video up uh and uh thanks everyone for watching if you enjoy our content and want to keep up to date on our games please leave a like and subscribe also if you want to support our projects consider becoming a patron the link's in the description and we'll see you soon